How no, are listening you to it? Ashes of Heal. Still not done, but you know, Archon, it's fine. Yeah. Ah. Uh, how are you, Darian? My tablet will not connect to the Wi Fi at the house. You should sue it. I don't know how you sue a uh, tablet, but you should try. Mm-hmm. 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 I just don't feel like messing with it because uh, the Wi Fi password changed a while back and. Mm. All my other electronics are sent to it automatically, so I don't remember what it is, and I don't feel like uh, looking for it. It's you can sue the machine spirit within. God. Oh, no, no, I like, I like the machine, I just don't want to do the hassle right now, so no suing necessary. Mm. Not the machine, the machine spirit. It's it's full, it's AI. Yeah. The little demon inside. It's Ugh. when your printer smells your fear. Why am I getting a total service agreement? <laughs> God. Yeah, so I, I hope you guys don't judge me because of how fucked up Ashes Appeal is. Oh, I think it's beautiful. I'm about halfway, and it's it's terrifying. It's dark as anything, but it's beautifully done. Thank you. I tried. It's... Archon does it in a way that's just shock value. There's not much story to it. Yours has a beautifully woven story. Thanks. I don't know who Archon is. Archon of Flesh. Oh, oh, oh. It's, I just meant, cause I haven't even read their shit. It's just I know that everyone thinks it's fucked up. Was that a sneeze? It was a cough. Oh, huh. okay. Yeah, uh, I read a little bit of an excerpt of it, and it's like, huh. Yeah, he's uh, he's an interesting guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here, I want to test something just to make sure you guys can hear this. Oh, of course. Did you hear this that? Story does a How no. was it supposed to be? Oh, um, don't worry about it. It's a surprise for later. I don't um, like that. Okay. Huh. It's <laughs> no, I don't it's like it. Here, hang on. I think I can actually. How about that? Nothing on my end. Okay. Then well. I'll to... That just means I'll do the thing I was tempted to do anyway. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Is did um. I'm gonna have you guys pretend you had the meeting of a god's vision when you go to sleep tonight. Oh. And then we'll do the sanity stuff. And then if you guys wanna go, holy shit, what was that? That'd be the end. Uh... I thought that was gonna be later on. That's now? Yeah. Oh my god. I don't know if I'm emotionally ready for that. I'm it's kidding. I'm all, the, all the things you learned, you ha- won't be able to do anything about until months from now. But you can go ahead and have the vision now. Oh, that's so much worse, and you damn well know it. <laughs> I just want to, you know, it can torture you the entire time. You're waiting for time to catch up, so 35 days until time is normal. You know, you know what the worst part is, Bailey? You know what the huh? worst part is about this whole thing? I called half of this. <laughs> I've been saying, we live in a cyclical universe. It's all this matchup. I knew it was right, but uh, when I tried to guess it each time I rolled low on uh, Arcana or Religion, I guessed so much. Yeah. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I love it, but I hate it. And for some reason, uh, Claudius and King Henry keep forgetting that they've read the prophecy, and it's as though they've been showing it for the first time every time they've seen it. So Henry's read it like four times. ideas about that. Uh-huh. My theory is, it's because it's supposed to occur, and if they know about it, it'll prevent it. And because the mall exists outside of time, outside of universes, it is a sort of pinpoint in time and space where it has to occur. And any interference or knowledge of the beings, which would be Henry and Claudius, that's the god that they become, because it's foretold in that way, it can't prevent itself. It would be a bootstrap. It's a good theory. I hate it here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so evening in Preferred, day 394. Time left. It's currently 29 days until uh, the revolution, and so it's 35 days until time is normal. That seems like it's wrong. Huh. I need to redo that math. Um. No, 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 you left the Feywild, my notes were fucked up, you left the Feywild day 29 of 1379. So that's, yeah, that's the day of time fucked up, so you're, yeah. Alright. 
So, last game you guys found the Vivianite codes with Bastion's supercomputer brains. You cracked them, getting hints on where Serial and the Vivianite main headquarters might be. Also learning somehow Dennis is involved with this Vivianite who was leading clues. Things left to do in town is the option to discredit the Deacon because he has more New Age radical beliefs about what churches should be doing right now, and he's just kind of a dick also. Uh, he's been watering down the folks' liquor to raise, or out of town folks' liquor to raise money for a joint religion church to make small people, small town people feel like they have a say in things. And he has no idea what's going on, but he did listen and took notes when you told him about them all. And then, uh, someone mentioned there's a doctor in town that was trained by, uh, in the college in Thunderscrim. If you have questions, a bona fide medical man could answer. And other than that, you have exhausted all of the side quests in this town. So we just do we skedaddle or do we break this man down and part brutalize him emotionally, physically, religiously? And you could also do that on your way back. You're going to be passing back through this town. Sure. Wouldn't mind breaking him later. Give him time to think over what he's done. Maybe let the maw take him over. That's one thing is now we know that the maw is communicating. We have Bash and I think any other Gondites, maybe. Gondorians? Gondos? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, why not let a few more people break that we don't like? Get him to really lean into religion. Yeah, hey, buddy, you should ask for prophecy. Yeah. Hey, you should pray more. Mm -hmm. It won't break you. Trust me. I'm a Mercurian. Yeah. It'll be fine. <laughs> what could What could go wrong? Does your god talk to you? Mine? Mine? Sometimes? No, no, no. I mean, we could just ask him. Like, does your god talk, um, talk to you? Like, do you really think you're doing the right thing? If your god's not talking to you, you're not doing something right. I mean, Pelor does have, I think it's something like 12 or 13 million people. No, 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 no. I think it's like 12 million. Because if it's half of Sankarel and then... Yeah, around, around 12 million current followers. Do you think yes, he can respond to all of them? Also, commoners typically don't get visions. In fact, it's very rare for even clerics and shit uh, to get them. So... I was a commoner once. Yeah. It was before you, my you time, I was a commoner once. Yeah, I mean, like, oh, do you really think you're doing the right thing? If you were on the right path, your God would talk to you. Or no news is good news. Ah, uh, no, no, we want him to dis we want him to disbelieve his own shit. I mean, you could have it's definitely not unethical. Yeah, let's go find him right before we head out. Yeah, or it's it's night, so you could sleep in town, or you could um, get a few hours away, and then stop. It's up to you. Hmm. Um, Carolina, what do you think? You're the smart one here. Yeah. I say we go away. Fair enough. Let's skedaddle. Okay. This is to you one more time. I'm going to slap him. <laughs> uh, you tell the kids and Foliam and Jade and Seamus and Jameson, hey, we're going to leave. And they're like, okay. And so they all start packing up their shit. And uh, the rest of the bar is semi-sad to see them go, as the kids are cute, and then Seamus and Jameson tells good stories. But they are all furiously packing their bags, because we've been here for like, I don't know, like five days or something. And um, they're like, yeah, they're just, they're ready to, to go. Though they've enjoyed their stay here, doing level one things. But the, the barkeep, even, uh, Deacon Daniel Dijon, is like, y'all are leaving? And he looks a little hopeful. Only for now. We'll be back. I'll see you again anyway. In the he end. He looks much less happy about this. When I say in the end, I'm going to do a quick flash of my hair and eyes going not just black, but void of light and color. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I'm going to walk out. Make an intimidation check. Oh, let me pull that up. Okay, for some reason, didn't have it pulled up yet. I definitely am prepared for this. That's fine. I definitely know what I'm doing. With my negative one intimidation anyway. 
Uh huh. That is a 15. I did it on a D and D Beyond. That's I'm just pulling up roll twenty right now. <laughs> uh, you can easily tell he looks actually afraid, and just lets you and watches you guys go. Doesn't say another word to you. Uh, good, good. I, I like keeping them in line with fear. Mm-hmm. It's ethical, no, or moral it's... at least. And we've been here so long, he's actually afraid that you're going to do something nefarious. Not here, but you know, that you finally... Uh, One day. You're going, you've been behaving here. He's thinking you're, you're going to go somewhere where you're going to misbehave. But that's yes. not going to be his problem, really. The, the Mercadian rejects never misbehave. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, usually you don't ask for big shit to happen. It just snowballs and then you, you know... Yeah. Yeah. But so you guys easily started on the road. Do we want to go ahead and roll a, a d6, any of you? Oh, go ahead, Pam. Oh, okay. On the road again, three. Three. You guys get about... And how long are you guys going to, to travel? Like, how far are you planning to get out of town? Because it's like maybe four or five right now and i think all of you except for jade have dark vision so you could you know the kids aren't tired <laughs> well, we can keep going okay jade stay next to me be at least five feet away both of you from the other what remember how i was on your shoulder when i couldn't see in the dark we don't talk about that uh, and Jay goes, I was just about to say something. I am so happy to follow you. Please tell me if there are any holes, because, like, my shoes don't go with me twisting my ankle well. Uh, I'll then, let you know. And I'm just watching them like a teacher at a high school dance. And she'd be or like, well, you're human and you have dark vision? That's crazy. Yeah, I cut his... You know what? Honestly, I learned how to fight while blinded um uh -huh. and then you know i got this cool sword and it's you know did some stuff with it and it's actually giving me some other abilities one of them being dark vision that's a that's a good sword yeah <laughs> i'm now watching them like a teacher at a middle school dance uh-huh i don't know what the difference is mm -hmm. but someone will yeah, yeah. I also got a thing that can cast daylight. Well, like, that'll be useful for, like, um, if, like, a fight happens, just, like, you know, cast it over us or whatever. Yeah, I almost casted it on a group of darklings. Uh, oh. And, what the fuck's yeah, a darkling? That, uh, they were actually exiled from the Feywild. Um, and they were trying to, they were trying to get to me because I had this sword. Which led down a whole path of me activating the powers of the sword and everything. So if I would have cast a daylight, I would have probably immediately killed all of them and never got known what this sword could actually do. I did kill one of them. They're an endangered race. Yes. But, you know, we went to the Feywild and liberated them, so... Oh, yeah, I got cool. the sword. Well, hey, maybe, like, if you um, ever need to go in the Underdark for anything, you'll have, like, some allies down there. Yeah. Friends are always good. Yeah, yeah, maybe. And she looks between okay. Pale and Foley and goes, I'm the only one who's good at making friends. I'm great at making friends. I, I made plenty of friends. One of them's in jail. One of them disappeared into the nothingness. The other one disappeared with him. But I have... Two friends, plus several children, and a girlfriend who goes to a different school. And Foley will go, yeah, it's hard to make friends when you're going to outlive all of them. Bold of you to assume that any of us are going to survive the mall thing, but I like the optimism. <laughs> Maybe a little finger gun at him. It's, he meant all of his friends that are dead, but, you know... <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm trying to just play off this trauma okay. into my <laughs> own future trauma. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry, it only gets worse. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm out here like, it gets better? No, it gets wetter. No, no. Oh, boy. I'll be but... here all week. <laughs> but how, how late into the night do you guys keep walking? I'm pretty uh, sure we were traveling with, like, a caravan, right? <laughs> We were. We left them. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's... Probably like I, 10, 11 at the latest. Okay. I was about to say, I don't know what your, your fucking... If you guys got delayed here, I guess they paid you for whatever you traveled them for. And yeah. then they left. Cause they, I forgot not about to be them. The, uh, not to be the kid who calls out the homework, but they already paid us and went their own separate way. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Like, it's... Whatever. Uh, you guys started talking about an archfey that they didn't see at all, and you came back with a um, a gnome. So they're like, mm, "You did some crazy shit." Actually, you know, they're they were already like, "You guys are too powerful to be traveling with us," but whatever. And you're like, oh, "Maybe in our best interest to leave these weirdos behind." It's not like us being extremely powerful causes more things to find out about us and come after us. Yeah, that would be crazy. As is the law of the Dane. As you grow more powerful, so your enemies will also. That's why Swedish and Norwegian people are so strong. Mm. God, I'm a Damn right. Um, but as you as you guys get about six miles, so you know, an average pace of like twenty minutes each one. If you're walking fairly brisk, ruck march pace or whatever, or you my guys might have had a cart. I don't know. Uh, uh, nope. Okay, so you're walking. And it's okay. You're all very athletic. And <laughs> so you get like, you know, six miles. It's, it's nearing the end of sunset. And as you do, you hear a whistling. And then see in front of you and then hear and almost even feel in the bottom of your feet as a goat falls from the sky and then splats on the ground as though they're from a great height to the point where they like make a dent in the hard packed dirt in the road. Just almost like a meteor, this goat falls and then splats into a- Didn't we have this happen before? Yeah, it was a dwarf last time though. Yeah. Yeah, I moved Jane out of the way. Um, Five feet apart. Five feet apart, you two. You know I can be in any space, right? At any time. Do not call my sister a space. Oh my god. <laughs> Wasn't what I was talking about, but I like that pale. No, no, I, no. Stop it. Just to make you uncomfortable, I don't know what Jade's actual motivations are, but uh, she wings at you pale and says, you have to go to sleep sometimes, little brother. I... It's like a week, maybe two. We just don't even know when you were born. I Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm just going to kind of play that off, look at Folium, and then just go walk over the goat and see if I can discern anything about it. Yeah. Pell Jr. would eagerly join you, um, looking at their obliterated anatomy, probably even poking it, as they're very curious. And they go, is this like a, is this like a lung piece? You're like a medical guy, right? Uh, me? Yeah. <laughs> Ish, I'm a healer. I don't know if that's medicine, but you know. Oh, right. And they just poke innards more. Uh, Is there like a, a, hill, a hilltop or mountaintop somewhere nearby where this goat just fell out of the sky? You are currently, I will do the little circle thing on the map. You're like right here, this line under, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, but there is a, a slight elevation to the west, and then to the east, it just goes down into the bay. You can still see Golgory from here. That's quite a large hill. Down but the there's nothing. There's there's some a little bit of hill country action, but it's not. There's no like mountain in the distance. I mean, mm. there is. The world's flat, so you can see Thunderscrum Mountains and Polda Mountain from here, where. Um, yeah. What? It did it again. It kicked me off again. Shit. I was just explaining the world's flats. You can see several hills, but there are none directly 
Unless somebody launched something from Golgari to where you are across the bay, but that'd be nuts. That's like, it's like 90 miles. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. It, and it just came from straight up? Yeah, straight up. It fell directly down. Is there a god of goats? Uh, Pan is a satyr. Oh. I'm just gonna... Huh. We're on the is, way uh, to the, the one guy anyway. It is, uh... Avon Lorfield here playing jokes. <laughs> he trying to always, get our attention? It's always a possibility. Yeah, is he trying to get our attention? I mean, it's definitely not Pelor. Because Pelor doesn't have a sense of humor. Right. Too bad this goat can't talk. I mean, it could if we wanted to waste a diamond and then go try and find a druid and go from okay. there, but... You can probably spare the dying on it and see if that works. And then, you know, I'm gonna try to. Uh, uh, I don't. I think Bash and Mike, uh, Danny, the kids have what? Uh, speak of animals. <laughs> uh, no. Oh, uh, Jameson, Jameson. He might let me look at my ship really quick. Volume D, Jameson, Jameson. Of course, he's in volume D. Well, that's my second hard drive. It's loading. Um, speak with. He has comprehend languages. Is that close enough? That counts. No, I think that's. He has tongues also. Oh, I'm sure he does. He's a bard. Oh. Let me see what tongues does. I'm pretty sure it makes it where you can understand anything. I mean, I'd recommend asking uh, Leo, but that might get weird. Yeah, mm. comprehend languages means that you can understand the language. Uh, tongues, I believe, means you can speak it. Hmm. Makes sense. Kind of. Uh, tongues is your, uh, it's any spoken language. Uh, is goat not spoken? No. Oh. Wait, what do you mean you can't understand? <laughs> well, it's... Uh, I can. When the target speaks, any creature that knows at least one language and can hear the target understands what it says. You need a minimum of like a, I think five to understand five language. Yeah. So the goat has like two. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, nobody can uh, can't spare the die. I mean, uh, can speak with uh, animals. No point. Yeah. But you know, we could probably cook it up and make something to eat. Do we even have a fight? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I start putting the goat towards you. You want me... Okay, listen, I'll, I'm going to start cutting it up. Okay. But the meat's tenderized, I'll just say that much. I'm also going to try and do, like, a little prayer to... Um, is, what, what's the closest to a god of gravity? Probably God. He invented it. I was going to reach out to God, like, hey, now you're, uh, your son's with you, but... If you're causing the goats to randomly like fly up and fall, can you not? Thanks. Bye. <laughs> uh, Make a religion check. Oh, God. Oh, God. Mm. These plus six come in handy. Okay, so 21. A dirty oh 21. <laughs> the dirtiest of 21s. Oh, man. It's I, I I said if you would have gotten like a natural twenty, he would have responded. Um, but he's a not your god. B doesn't talk to anyone. Uh, oh, bash him in our three. Yeah. Well, that wasn't to us. Have we had that dream yet, or is that tonight? That is tonight. Matt asks, not pale. Hey, I know we're supposed to have a terrifying dream tonight. Where's that already happened? You could you just have a vague sense of dread. It's fine. That's nothing different for pale. <laughs> That's been his I entire feel, life since he left. He just I feel like ready. something in the future is going to make me lose sanity. Huh. What makes you say that as I talk to the creator god? As you say, the maw is coming in regular conversation. Yeah, yeah. so the maw is coming. But anyway, we know that the maw is coming. The maw is coming. Yeah, that it is. What is? That, the maw. Oh, coming. yeah. It's always so weird when the mall is coming, people will just randomly say that. Yep. But anyway. 
Yeah, your your family looks sad, Pale, as you have an episode. Guys, come on. What are the odds I end up like the boy king's dad? <laughs> Pretty I mean, high. Hey. hey, at least when we have it, we have a short episode and just end up hungry. You know, Bastion starts babbling stuff. Bastion and speaks re- more. Yeah, he starts babbling stuff and remembering stuff. That's kind of scary. It It's legitimately deeply terrifying and unsettling. Yeah, I feel like I just smoked devil grass and, you know, just what I got the munchies. That's all. Which is very bad. Is it, though? Listen, I'm trying to set a good example for my sister here. She laughs. It's not working. (laughs) Anyway. Yeah, but you guys uh, cut up the goat. Uh, I don't know if you want to camp here for the night with your your free meal. Uh, Yeah. uh, But, yeah, because by the time you get done cutting it up and everything, uh, it'd be dark. A um, little past dark. But all the kids sit in a circle. Pale Jr. is playing with the bones. And Nuki <laughs> is predictably just kind of being sentry. Looking around. That's about right. Uh, Nuki is probably, I don't know, helping somebody fix a strap on their backpack or something. I want to I wanna spar with uh, Nuki. Yeah, they they would be down. They are always happy to learn ways to protect their friends. It's um, could go ahead and roll me a. What would the thing be? I would say, okay, make an athletics check. Twenty four. Okay, and then a insight check. Insight plus five. Oh, that's a nine. And then a either persuasion or performance check. Ooh, I think I suck at both of those. Um, uh, persuasion. 19. Okay. Sure. It's despite you... The inside check was like to see if they were picking up what you were putting down. But despite you... You know, they have a pretty expressionless face. <laughs> by which I mean it doesn't move at all. So despite you being a little uncertain if they're understanding what you're saying, you you are successful in teaching them whatever aspect of fighting you are teaching them. They they seem a little bit more confident as as it is over. And being confident is rare for Nakia. Yes. Confidence is key. Mm-hmm. And when you got a moving target as fast as I am, you gotta be confident that you can figure out what their next move is and hit them. Yeah, here, I'll even roll something really quick. Oh. <laughs> mm. Like, right. Yeah, they they still aren't very good at fighting, you know, because they're level one. But they are they are learning. And, you know, you've got sage advice and shit, so... <laughs> I'm fast as fuck, boy. Yeah. You gotta antici- anticipate where I'm gonna land next. I'm sorry, I've been watching... Uh, um, Ooh, uh, no. I've been watching the whole Pitch Black series, uh, hmm. Riddick series. Oh, oh good. Yeah, Carolina's Fury. And- I went to that prison. I found them. They didn't give me your ass. So good. Has no right to be that good. That's that's literally like the like at the next level up. She's getting silver eyes. Yes. Like it's all, all uh, she's Furion and Necromonger. That's terrifying. Yes. And then somebody roll me any dice, your favorite dice, whatever one. You got this. I rolled the last fancy one, random encounter thing. Alrighty, one. Okay. Uh, God, <laughs> we're about to die. Uh, uh make a percep- uh Both of you make me perception checks as you're sitting. Oh, around something I'm not dinner. terrible at. Setting up your bed rolls, that sort of thing. What's your L size C? I have a seventeen. Mm-hmm. Twenty-two. Okay. Both of you see and hear this, and let me roll for the NPCs. I forgot about that. This is for full <coughs> Jade. Uh, Don't go dying on us, King Henry. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 
Hey, don't apologize. You know, do better. Okay. That's a joke. Please uh-huh. don't hurt me. Going to make myself better. Uh, both of you uh, hear and then look up and see this. Now make me a deck save. Oh, God, it's another one. Uh, we decided to stay in the land of falling goat. Yep, that's an eight. That's like I come from the land down under. What's the under? Goats. Uh, can I alert everybody? I got a 13. Um, look out. Interesting. Yeah, look out. You're all. Uh, how Bunga. Okay. So, uh, Folium also sees it. Jade also sees it. Oh, I forgot to roll four. We have too many fucking NPCs in our party right now. Seamus and doesn't see it at first, but the only two people who, um, don't see it and don't notice, because Pale Jr. noticed, but Nokia and Yagami are slammed dunked by this, and then also you, Pale, as you didn't get out of the way fast enough, even though you knew it was coming. There is a... It's, you know when they're they're selling trees at, like, a market, and it's got, like, the sackcloth around it to keep some dirt in its roots or whatever? <laughs> So a small orange tree in, like, a bag holding the dirt in uh, falls about 20 feet away from you guys. And the bag of dirt and, like, sticks and everything just explode. And I'd say you you take, like, three points of damage each as your hardy folks are covered in metal or are metal entirely. Those of you who got hit, so it's not... eh. But it's not big, but you are... Your entire camp is now covered in dirt and tree pieces, and you smell citrus as some oranges exploded on the ground also. Okay. Which one of you did it? I'm not angry. Which one of you did it? Your friends and companions all look... They've jumped up after you've all been sitting around the campfire or whatever, and they're brushing the dirt out of their... Eyes just like open mouth of what the fuck is happening. <laughs> I'm gonna try and look around and just kind of see if there's any information as to these random falling objects, like any origin. Also, are there any other orange trees around here? And make a perception check oh. uh, or investigation if you like. I think those are the same for me. I would like to make an, uh, a perception check to see if there's a giant just deciding to throw shit at us. Okay. So 17. Got my plus two mods on lock. 13. I don't see shit. Yeah, there is, there is not a giant just standing around. Pale, you do not see any other orange trees, though they do grow here south in this... So that I don't know what kind of climate but you're getting into like California-ish climate but you as these are falling straight down and there's not a cloud in the sky make me an arcana check as you poke around this orange tree what's left yep. of this orange tree that is a uh, <laughs> that's an 8 yeah, uh, you poke around and you're like, "There's, there's got to be something to this," which obviously it just fell out of the sky, but you're not able to tell what. Oh my god, damn! I think we should move out of this radius, and uh, when we stop, Shameson, uh can you do you cat? Do you have tiny hat? Ah. Uh... Oh, I'm on the wrong character. Bailey, accidentally looking at a, a champion of Pan. No. Huh. Well. I had Nokia's character sheet open. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's what I said. Uh-huh. The future champion of Pan. He says he does not. Let me check a different spell that he has, though. Moderate to severe hut. <laughs> the impenetrable fortress. That's just Pale's heart. No, it's not. You got a girlfriend. Shut up. What? You just said it five minutes ago to, to Jane Folium, and they don't believe you. I they, they totally believe me. They believe me, right? I'm trying to help them. Wait, they believe you for what? I'm sorry. I was reading something. <laughs> I bet that Erica's real. Oh, oh, oh. 
Folium and Jade believe you that she's real, but they're still going to tease you about it the whole time. Do I know that they're teasing? Or do I just think that they think that she's not <laughs> like real? Like an insight check? <laughs> I'm going to make a disadvantage just because it's funnier. Wait. And I did just say they don't believe you. Hmm. I think I did three, it's just whatever the... Two and five. That's a uh, one yeah. and a four. It, you... You might think that they are not believing and being kind of mean to you. <laughs> Even funnier. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he has any places to make a thing and hide. Although Nokia uh, does raise their shield above their heads, and it's a big uh, shield. <laughs> right. I'm going to look around for shelter. There are some trees you could get under. Yeah, for now. Trees are, fa- trees are falling. How do I know these trees aren't the ones being lifted oh, up? Yeah. Falling on us? <laughs> it was a little tree. It was like seven feet long, uh, tall. Oh, the trees, the trees are growing trees at us. Yeah, it wasn't like a big, fully grown tree. It was like a sprout you'd buy at a Home Depot. Are there tree ants? Uh, tree ants are a thing. You have fought one before. Though that was north of the cold line. Yeah, it kicked my ass because I couldn't use magic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good times. It's a little I'm gonna, PBT. I'm, I'm gonna go, you know, uh, pull out an axe near one of the trees. <laughs> Trying to intimidate the tree. Yes. Uh, all amazing. you hear around you is the rustle of leaves and the the ocean breeze going by. I'm going that rustle to... sounds like fear. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm not going to hit the tree, but I'm going to swing at a tree. Here. The tree doesn't move at all. A well-trained tree. Well-trained. What's that one quote? Um, If they run, uh, they're uh, the enemy, and if they don't run, they're well-trained enemy. Nice. (laughs) Here, uh, as you... As you swing your axe, Carolina, a spider that was hanging down from a web, you slice it in half on accident. That's... That's big metal. <laughs> There's some, some bug juice on your axe now. Alright, I'm gonna cut off a tree branch. N- nothing happens. The other one, was it was it a dwarf or a gnome? A uh, dwarf was the other thing that fell out of the sky. Hmm. So that was living before you reached Preford, even. It might not be an area, but just following us. But that seems too predictable. Yeah, it's because we're in a time paradox. They're throwing shit at us. You're fucking out time! Maybe. The mechanism is pissed off. But I feel like because... There, there, I, I get the vibe that there's some sort of magical something to it. So... There's got to be well, something. I mean, is, there a, is there a spell that can throw things? Uh, there's gravity sinkhole. It's part of no. a, a dunamancy from my area. Hmm. There's got to be some sort of Jenny Sequa. Who is that? Well, you know, Jenny Sequa, but uh, are you saying it? Uh, uh. Yeah. Um... It's living things, but different versions of living things. They've all been somewhat alive in different ways. It's getting less intelligent each time. It's the apocalypse. Uh, don't tease me. Don't tease me. I'll get hopeful. I'll cry if it's not. You've seen uh, me well, apocalypse cry. Well, next is going to start raining blood. Oh, my God. Do you know how many plague walkers have told me that? They all were to kind of get my pants. So they could put diseases in them. Yeah, no, just horrible, horrible diseases. But, you know, if gender's what's in your pants, then their genders are herpes, syphilis, and chlamydia. (laughs) Yeah. um, So do we want to take shelter by the trees or try to find something a little more solid? I am going to stay out from underneath anything and just stare up at the sky defying anyone to try to throw more things at us. Yeah, make a religion check and then a con save. Alright. Oops, what did I do? There we go. Religion. Uh, 
religion check. An 11. My con save is... Uh-oh. Oh. A 9. You stare up at the sky for a while, squinting suspiciously at the stars, which are beautiful this time of night. And, um, you know, you can see the fantasy equivalent of the Milky Way, huh? Uh, but your neck does kind of hurt after a while. Hmm. Nothing? No. Dang it. Dagnabbit, even, per se. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Carolina, who knows that we're after them? Uh, all the gods? Yeah, but aside from them, they're a bunch of wimpy, weak. They're disjointed. They never even speak to each other, communicate. They're a mess. I'm going to pray to uh, uh, Avon Lorafield. And, you know what? On top of that, Gond hasn't called a council. I don't think he even could. Pelor's too stupid to even pay attention to his own followers, let alone himself. I'm, I'm going to start gonna ranting about the gods. I'm going to ask him if he's just... Is he trying to get our attention? Is he playing a joke? Or is this even him? Make a religion check. I swear to God, if Charlotte comes and pops on after this, and this is all <laughs> one big lead-up, Bailey, I'm going to drive down there. <laughs> just want to be very clear about that. Summoning a lot of animals is something Leo would do. 17. Reason. A 17. Um, now make me a persuasion check. 18. Uh, you feel a shrug, and uh, this ain't one of mine. Mm. Though I'm it is funny. Religious. <laughs> I mean, it's also falling from the sky, air, weather. Umberly, we're going to find her guy because he's lost in the wet. Hmm. Well, it's not Davy Jones. He's in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, but maybe this is her saying that we have to get back to what we're doing, and that's why she's dropping things on us. Because she's well, a petulant child. So, I mean, if she was going to do that, I think she'd be a little more specific, you know, like drop a squid out of the sky, you know? No, because knowing you, that squid would either be eaten or used for uncouth purposes. Yes. Don't sound so proud. I'm insulting you. 42. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm still just going to sleep outside. I'm not even going to bother trying to uh, stay inside. I feel like this is something, a higher being in some form trying to get our attention. They got it. Yeah, I mean, they got my attention. All right, I'm going to find the biggest tree and uh, just we'll prop up next to it. I'm also going to light the tree on fire. The one that was thrown at us. Okay. I yeah, this is like a I'm just gonna say, as I do it, volunteers, you make my voice boom. If you're trying to do this for a reason, we are too stupid. Please just tell me. If you want to talk, if you're a god and you want to do something, we'll do it. I'm just confused. Immediately, <laughs> when he lights it on fire, I immediately put it out. With what? Control flames. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, not this again. You daughter of a. Oh my god. I, I try to be sneaky so he doesn't see it. I just. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Make a still. Why does it keep going out? <laughs> so dumb. The pale make a perception check. 30. <laughs> 11. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? You could, you could, with a 30, you could. It, this tree will not fucking burn pale. <laughs> Guys. I think we pissed off the tree god, Pan. I think he doesn't want us to go find his boy. Pan, we're not going to hurt him. We just want to talk, but for real this time. Not like when I said I just want to talk to you and I killed him. I literally just want to talk to him. Uh, make an arcana check. Oh, no. You goat-legged horny bastard. Uh, arcana, that's a 21. Yeah, having spent a lot of time around Leo, who summons animals a lot, you can tell that this tree, and now that you think about it, the goat and the dwarf too, had a vague aftertaste of a summoned creature or thing. Like it's they've they've been through some sort of pulled out of somewhere and put into here, huh? They're being bimbledy pooped or worse. 
Yeah, they're being taken from somewhere and then dropped somewhere else. Oh, no. It just, it just smells like summoning magic. Uh, I'm going to get out a gold coin, pass my little baby boy. I'll roll the d20 for him now. Oh, fucking Dan's work That's experience. 17. And when he gets here, I'm just going to be like, hey, do you smell any summoning magic nearby? Yeah, he's actually in good enough shape to where uh, he has a nose and he can probably even smell. He's just kind of yeah. pale and I'd say a little purple, like in the face, you know. It's called liver mortis. But <laughs> it's just when your blood pools, you know, wherever you were. And hey, that means he's still got blood in his system. I'm proud of him. Yeah, yeah, for once. Um, yeah. But DM's work experience walks around and they say, I'll be honest, boss. I don't know shit about magic. Uh, that's fine. Grab gr- grab some goat. I don't know where you go after you're unsummoned, but grab some goat. Enjoy. Okay. <laughs> they probably just sit next to the campfire with you guys. Hey, good company. Yeah. It's, uh... Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to look around. DM's, DM's work experience does also have the vague aftertaste of summoning magic. Yeah. But I know that taste. I like that taste. I've tasted him many. I t- the, you Wait, know what? Uh, you know what I'm gonna do? Hmm? I'm gonna cast banishment on the tree. But I'm also would I be able to hold on to it while I do that to see where it goes to? Let me look up banishment real quick. Does my flying monkey have dark vision? Listen, sometimes you just gotta gotta flow with the go. You know. You cast banishment on the tree and a minute later it reappears which according to the spell means it is from this plane the material plane mm. on the beginning that's was from here but was summoned here but was summoned above us but so someone's trying to drop things on us via summoning but things that aren't really Deadly, per se. Just a nuisance. Maybe if it, like, direct hit you, it would hurt a lot, but not being yeah. a direct hit so far. Nor will there be. Still. My monkey doesn't. My monkey can't see in the dark. Hmm. I'm just going to kind of yell out again, again, with Thaumaturgy booming my voice as big as mm-hmm. I can. If you're summoning things, we can help you do it not in the middle of nowhere on top of people. Bro, and if you have sending a message, hit me up. Why are you yelling? I'm trying to get their attention. I think you got it, and I'm pretty sure we already had it. Well, I'm trying harder. You know, people people like when you try too hard. Shows you care. Uh-huh. Jade gives you a dubious look. I'm going to sleep. I'll take first watch. Okay. It's between all of you and the Forgeborn kids, there'll be always like two people awake, so... Yeah. Or at least two. The Forgeborn kids even take turns doing their um, update. Whatever thing they do. Restart, turn it off and on again. Uh Yeah, just their their software updates, storing information they've learned for the day. Uh, It only gets more terrifying the more you say it. (laughs) Yeah, but so, uh, in the night, you guys have the A Meeting of the Gods vision. And, Darian, you had a dirty 20, a 3, a nat 20, a 17, and then two fives. So I need you to make two sanity saving throws. I don't know how many points of sanity you have left. But it is, it's dice plus whiz mod plus one for every five sanity you have. So if you have 17, it is still a plus three for you on top of your wisdom save. Okay. Wisdom plus one. Two. So it was dice plus... It's a wisdom save plus three. 21. Okay. And then one more. Oh, and that one. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, you lose a sanity point. 16. And then, Did I have to roll three of them? No, no, no. Uh, it was just two, but then... Because I had two fives and a three. Yeah, I canceled the um, one of the fives out with a nat 20. 
So, oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. But you... 16 uh, sanity points. Nice. And then, Matt, you had a 23, 24, 23, 7, 8, and 9. So I need you to make three sanity saves. And yeah. How many points do you have left? 16. Okay. Wiz plus three, right? Yes. So my uh, wisdom save or wisdom uh, wisdom roll? save wisdom save. Okay, so that's plus nine to each. Yeah, you're good at those. Whoa! We both got matching uh, sanities now. Oh yeah! Yeah. The maw is coming. Nice. Yes, it is. Yeah. So you you don't lose any tail. Yeah. Uh, but you do have the Maw Vision three times, and Carolina, you have it twice. But you guys uh, wake up panting, sweaty. You feel like you're gonna fucking die. Like you, you probably even wake up with a, a shout of the Maw is coming. You say it like four or five times. I, each. I'm uh, going to instead of saying trying to even speak or anything, I'm just going to uh, sending over to her. Just we're awake. We're okay. I just kind of say that for as many words as I have. Okay. I only hear the mobs coming. That's so much scarier to hear that in your head. Yeah. And you probably accidentally messaged Carolina, the ma is coming. Probably. Even though you think you're saying we're cool. Yeah. That's terrifying. And the kids, all three of them, the first time they've heard you guys wake up with this. They each think that you said something different. Yagami Yagami asks you, the pulsing heart grows, the fuck are you talking about? And Nokia says, a corona of black dust? And Pale Jr. asked, sleepless fight like demons. What the fuck are you guys talking about? What's wrong with you? What are you talking about? Whatever you heard us say, you didn't hear us say. Huh? When Bastion's back, he'll explain. You heard us say nothing. Nothing was said. Understood? Make a persuasion check. Carp. 18. <laughs> okay. They they assume it's something scary that you guys uh, know about. <laughs> they assume correctly. Uh-huh. What, were, what were their words again? The okay. pulsing heart grows. A corona of black dust sleepless fight like demons the sleepless fight like demons is the dead pulsing heart grows that's the two getting closer a corona of darkness again the two getting closer to becoming them all i'm gonna relay that over to carolina like what i think they it means but again over sending so it's just like don't message. say anything to the kids message is it and, i don't know if i have message and fully message. and jade are what the fuck are you guys talking about uh, they look very concerned for your safety. And I'm just going to kind of look over at them, walk over and just say, huh. once we're done with this, kind of like with um, Renfalier, once we're done with Davy Jones, you two are going back home. And you're staying there. You're staying there until I say otherwise. Make a persuasion check with advantage. Yeah. Oh, please don't be two natural ones. I will cry. <laughs> that, will stay, that will stay in the audio. <laughs> That's a seven. <laughs> People are a lot harder to scare than robots. Yes, uh, especially robot children. And these two people mm-hmm. who know you very well and care deeply about you. Uh, That's their problem. Hell, what are you talking about? We're not, like, going to leave you to whatever fucking eldritch horror. Like, what the fuck? And <laughs> William's like... It's the eldritch horror. And Folium puts a hand on your shoulder. He's like, "We're family. We help family. Are you okay? I, I mean, I know you're not, but it, we're gonna, gonna help." I'm gonna take Folium aside, out of as far as I know, out of everyone's earshot. Yeah, I'm just gonna look at him and say, "What happened to you in that cave is going to happen on such a larger scale here. You had to watch your friends die. If we fail." I would rather lie to myself as my last breath leaves and pretend that you're going to survive instead of seeing the light leave your eyes before it's pulled from mine. Hopefully we can stop this. Give me that one reprieve. 
he grips your shoulders tighter as a appraising look up and down in your face and he says well when it gets closer I'm sure we'll be busy in our own ways and all I can ask I'm we're gonna figure this out hey Carolina what the fuck <laughs> oh you saw that too? no really yeah what what also, Claudius is much better looking. I expect him to be like some decrepit old, like, scraggly dude. Good looking dude. I mean, it's like actually tight. Yeah, I've always just imagined him as like 102 human. You know, that. Not, not what he was. Good for him. You know, <laughs> humans have really lived that long, right? No, no. That's why I was surprised. Not, not usually, yeah. Uh, what, was, what was that about them? Why are they forgetting? I... <laughs> I, um... Uh, hmm. Caroline, I'm going to be real with you. The two of them are supposed to be a god, right? What happens when you take an egomaniac and an atheist who want to break a wheel and become powerful, all-powerful, and live forever? You get something that's hungry for nothing and all things. We know that Henry will do anything to save his people. I think Henry's the Maw. One half of it, at least. Yeah, so you think that they're the Maw if they become the God. And I don't think we're going to actually be able to stop it. I think that window closed before we found out about him being immortal. Well, we know that. He don't know that. But if we try to kill him, we already know that Pelor would probably bring him back anyway. As a battery? Yeah. I'm going to I mean, slowly pull out MM and look over at Carolina. Like, look, Do we, I'm on, I've already got Vivianites trying to kill him that I'm trying to convince that he's not the one we need to kill. I have a better idea than killing him. The king needs his soul. A person can live without their soul. We've already seen that. We have the soul batteries. We could probably find a way to pull it out. He could die a hundred times. It would just be a body. If we have his soul on our person all times, Claudius can't get to him. So how do we get his soul? We take it from him. We tell him, once the time comes, once we're back in the right time again, we tell him that we saw it, and we we tell him what our plan is. We have to tell him forthright that we know, and we ask him to relinquish his soul to us. I okay, mean, so if he keeps if he keeps forgetting about the prophecy, what's to say that we make this plan with him and he doesn't forget that? Well, if he forgets, then it's even better. He doesn't know that his soul is gone. Claudius comes for him, and that's what it is. Well, and then also, uh, how do you convince an atheist to give up his soul? Simple. It will let him live longer. So it's a medical procedure that will make his breathing easier. Then, less coffee on his part because he'll think so. And we're safer for a little bit, a little bit longer. Uh, I think the Maw is inevitable at this point. We missed our window. That can happen. It was dealt with. The Maw, just another god on a rampage. And if Vic could deal with that, we've seen Vic. I mean, we do know that there's really nice trying to kill him. We could let that happen. If he's killed, he'll be brought back. We need to have him dealt with in a way where his soul is relinquished. In a way that it can't be him brought back, or if he's brought back, it's ineffective anyway. They need his soul, we remove it. Take the pieces off the board. We talked about the king, the black king, queen. So, Can't be much without him. So what are you suggesting? We uh, we kill him, put his soul in the ring, you know, put the ring on his finger, kill him, and then bring him back to life with what spare to die? Yeah. Or with anything. I mean, yeah, we could bring him fully back, a full revivify. He'd never forgive us. And he'd keep us far, far away. We keep his soul. He thinks he's fine. You wouldn't believe anyone that told him that that happened anyway. 
And need to find a way to just keep his soul away from Claudius. Well, the raid. Exactly. Mine was already taken. You still have yours. Bastion has his. So, or we can even get another one and just yeah. Uh, and if I worst didn't... if worst comes to worst, truly, I if worst buy... comes to worst, I did my five we... and then... Yeah, and if if the truest worst comes to worst, if we think the Maw is truly unstoppable, we have to find a way no matter what. I'll feed his soul to MM. All things have to end correctly. And this isn't that way. Anyway, do we have any goat left? I am starving. Oh, yeah, there's a couple of, uh, well, there's a leg over there. I'm just going to chew on a bone. Yeah, get some marrow out. Yeah, just in a way that's really uncomfortable to everyone else. Yeah, crunch, crunch. Crunch. But like really satisfying to me. Really uncomfortable to everyone else, though. So. Yeah, uh, you you burn it like a lot and then Yeah, it's like scorch and you can smell the burn. Not the smoke, but just the burn. Mm-hmm. Seamus and walks up and he's like So uh you know I <laughs> uh Are you going Are you going to be all Right until we get there. Uh, we'll be good enough. I will at least. I won't speak for Carolina. She's stronger and scarier than me. Is I have. I mean, I don't even know if you have anything I can cast it on, but I have legend lore. It's. I can learn. Um, you know, well, you don't even have to have it with you, but it. A, a person, place, or object, and you you tell me about it, I can just kind of pick out the information that's floating through the the where it's not always useful, but I don't know. I'm just trying to be helpful. But <laughs> what can you tell us about Emperor Claudius? I uh, I mean, not even doing magic on that one. He's an uh, evil son of a bitch. Uh, there's yeah, he just has uh, kill anybody, do anything. He's got um, complete control over 11 million people. Uh, biggest navy in the world. I'm going to kind of get down on one knee and look at him and just say, I know that that's what the magic, the non-magic says. I want you to use magic and see if there's anything that conflicts with that. Yeah, sure. You know, tyrant themselves thinks that they're evil. And I worry what he's right. Because he has a a brief glimmer. You see there's not much. And he says his mother's name is Hanendra. It's a nice name. Don't know if I've heard that before. Um But yeah, I'm not sure. I'm a I'll keep trying, you know what? Um Don't 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 worry about it. We shall get back to sleep. We can talk about this in the morning. Right. Um, like y- you let me know if there's anything I can do. Uh, Absolutely. Even even if it's just, you know, playing some background tunes to let you chill out from having a fucking panic attack. I think I will, actually. <laughs> uh, won't, say, won't say no to that. He'll go sit on a log and play something nice on a violin. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to kind of look over at Carolina, Polyam, Jade the kids and she's like I'm gonna go sleep I'm gonna go sleep a little bit away from you guys I'm just I need to pray for a bit yeah oh um I should tell you while I'm thinking about it so Seamus and here these are the spells he has mass suggestions guards and wards scrying reincarnate mislead legend lore greater invisibility black tentacles uh, tongues to spell magic counter spell Pass without a trace, detect thoughts, calm emotions, thunder, fu- uh, thunder wave, identify, comprehend languages. Oh um, man, he's pimped out. Ooh, got yeah. Pass without trace. Yeah, he's level 11. The mass suggestion, though, that's going to get uh-huh. messy. I can't wait and, to abuse it. And reincarnate and scrying. Greater, invi- reincarnate. greater invisibility is crazy because it doesn't go away when you cast a spell or attack. Yes. Yes. Uh, Guards and wards is like if you already have a building you're in, he can put in a security system basically. Um, oh, that's counter sick, spell man. is big. 
yeah. Yes. yes. I like, I'm a, I like I'm a big fan. Yeah, I like Pass Without Trace because that's what I was going for with Razor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's got... Oh, this is, this is funny. Is he is naturally stealthy. He can hide behind creatures bigger than him, so he could just stand behind you and hide. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, but... He's a gnome, right? He is a gnome, yes. Yeah. And he's got also, inspiration yeah. and all that. Also, just before I forget, Hale's gonna go pray. But while mm-hmm. he's praying, he's just gonna pray to more cool and just after that vision and everything, he's just gonna say, I saw it all, and I just wanted to let you know. My only question is if the mall is an end to everything, why are we fighting it? Mm-hmm. And I'm just gonna go see religion sleep. check with advantage. <laughs> uh oh. I'm in danger. <laughs> Unless you didn't want him to respond. Oh, I do. So oh, okay. 15 plus 6, that's a 21. Okay. You get reminders of what you've heard before. One time you heard, when Bastion heard you say the Ma is coming, he heard, we are awake. And you remember in the prophecy, uh, Elder Michael's prophecy, it talks about being awake and you remember back when God was talking about how the universe cycle goes over of every soul has to burn out before Mercool can collapse reality. And so if reality is collapsing before souls burn out, that's a big problem. Yeah, I guess uh, Pale's point of view is it's an end to everything, so it's the most permanent end. Mercool just, no. No. <laughs> and Pal's just like, oh, bro. I don't oh, know no. this shit. Also, I'm probably going to have to pop off soonish, like five, ten minutes. So, yeah, no worries. No worries. Up. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be up in the tree on watch. Uh, me, mm-hmm. me and the monkey. And I got my echo out on the ground. Yeah, uh, you, the monkey. Pal Jr.'s in the tree next to you. Or another tree, you know. They can just climb up shit like a gecko. Yeah, I'm just up in the tree just so I can see everybody. Yeah, but night passes the rest of the way without a, um... without a hitch or anything falling from the sky. If you've got to pop off, Matt, that that'd be a good place to start if we want to. Or stop if we want to. But... Yeah, just a, a very unnerving night of having a, like two hour long vision. I believe it was an hour and 55 minutes. Yeah. And only one of you lost a sanity point. That's crazy. Well, we still have Bastion. See it. And for yeah, once, it wasn't me. For yeah, and once. Bastion could totally fuck up the sanity saves. And you don't know what's going to happen when, when he starts to. <laughs> I don't want to know what happens. It's corrupted software. <laughs> Sparks oh, flying. Oh, great. Something, something, machine god. Uh huh. <laughs> we're gonna get the void dragon by accident. So uh. you could get hacked by an eldritch horror. Great. We're gonna get Sky Bastion. <laughs> Bastion net. I don't even know. Either way, it's terrifying. I don't like it. Where's Sarah Connor? <laughs> god. <laughs> I think we're several thousand years and universes off. Hopefully. A long, long time ago in a galaxy far away. Did, did you see that thing online? This lady's talking about Terminator is the prequel to The Matrix. I saw oh. that and hate it. Oh. Because also, Terminator, much better ending than the series. Could I, I yeah. say that Terminator ends at uh, 4. Because 4 finishes the story. I would probably say 4 is terrible. 4 finishes the story. It fully rounds out the ending. Yeah, I will. I will die on that hill. Yeah, it's a good hill to die on. Plus, yeah. if you uh, if you ever want the Matrix to be ruined for you, watch Animatrix, which is a prequel animated series that ruins any mystery. It answers it every DVD. question. I have it on DVD. Yeah, I hate it. I watched it and I was livid that it answered every question. I, thought, I was like, oh, cool, just a little bit of background thing, neat. Every single mystery of the series answered. Yeah. It ruined all the debate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And it gave terrible reasoning behind everything. I mean, you can just cool. tell yourself it's not canon. I mean, it's not. As if it was canon, it. it would have been in the movies. Technically, four is canon, but I will die before I let that movie be canon. It's, I bought all of them, like all five DVDs for $10 at a Walmart in like one of those like series packs. <laughs> I need to watch See, those again. I respect that. It's a good film. See, the, the first one is the best. Two is good. Three goes a little off the rails, but I still respect it. Mm-hmm. Four, Neil Patrick Harris playing Neil Patrick Harris playing a villain. Bad. Bad. That's off, bad, bad. I thought four was hilarious. Yeah, it's a comedy. That's the problem. It is a comedy, but it thinks it's a Matrix movie. Yeah, I, I thought it was hilarious. It's like, oh yeah, you're living in our world again. I just can't know. get over the scene when Neo gets his eyes burned out and they're floating over and seeing the sunlight for the first time. That's like one of the, you know, I've seen under 300 movies in my life. I made a list, like trying to think of every movie I've seen. And um, that's, I think, one of the most, like, I don't know, formative or, you know, I saw it when I was like 14 for the first time. Like that's Mm -hmm. at the time it may still be, but that was like one of the most beautiful things I'd ever seen in cinema. Well, because it also, it understood that it was sci-fi dystopia religion. And they yeah. knew how to do the religious imagery without being fun of it, but while keeping it new. The idea of Jesus comes back, but he's blinded, plays off of Dune, Paul coming back blinded, but in a newer way where it's darker and humans lost about Larry and Jihad, leading into the ideas, but saying that the chosen one's still chosen and comes into his own once he's been broken. That's a beautiful archetype. And then you watch mm-hmm. four. Yeah. The power of love four. in a coffee shop. The power of love in a coffee shop can overpower a literal machine god. Me. Mm-hmm. Just tell yourself it's not canon. It's a fanfic that got through Hollywood. Well, I just can't wait for Kirk's Child to uh, be made into a movie. <laughs> it's a fanfic that got through Hollywood. Same with Shades of Grey. That was originally a Twilight fanfic. Which was based off of the uh, lead singer of My Chemical Romance. Yes. Gerard Way. I only learned that recently. That's fucking amazing. You know, Let's 9-11, remember, that- 9/11 <sighs> led to <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey. I, I can build that lore even further. It all happened because uh, our shoe friend Ferdinand was shot. Because that led to World War One, which led to World War Two, which led to the Cold War, which led to the U.S. military arming the Mujahideen, which led to 9-11. Yeah. 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 I, I got red yarn everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Why do and I it all believe? leads back to Noah. Uh, so long. All right. I, I'm going to pop off, kids. Have Keep fun out. with your red yarn. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll catch you later. All righty. Bye. Bye. Hey, it's your DM, Bailey Ford. I would like to thank our regular players, Darian, Matt, and Ian, Hip for our cover art, and Tabletop Audio for our background music. You can find us on Twitter at C. and thank you especially for listening.